Welcome. Welcome to our very first season of Life on Track. I'm so excited about this. This is about getting to the driver's seat of your own life, personally and professionally. Not anybody else's life, not my life, not Greg's life, nobody else's life, but your life. This is your time. So I want to introduce Greg. I'm so excited that he's here. Greg Reed. There he is. And Greg's bio is just, it's just incredible. And I have so many books of his here. Can't wait to get into this. So for over 25 years, Greg has inspired millions of people to take personal responsibility to step into their potential of their greatness. And as such, his life of contribution has been recognized by government leaders, a foreign princess, as well as luminaries <laughs> in education, business, and industry. Mr. Reed has been published in over 100 books, including 32 bestsellers in 45 languages. Titles such as Stickability, The Power of Perseverance, The Millionaire Mentor, and Three Feet from Gold, Turn Your Obstacles into Opportunities, have inspired countless readers to understand the most valuable lessons we learn are also the easiest ones to apply. Greg Reed is known best for being founder of Secret Knock, a Forbes and Inc. magazine top-rated event. He is the producer of the Oscar film, qualified, qualified film, Wish Man, based on the creator of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, streaming on Netflix now. For his work in mentoring youth in his hometown of San Diego, Mr. Reed was honored by the White House, where a former president commended Greg for his work for positively working with the youth through a local mentorship program. And if that is not enough, recently Greg was honored with the star in, of the infamous Las Vegas Walk of Stars. Welcome, Greg. Welcome to the Life on Track show. How are you? Amazingly great. Good to see you. I, I hope you've done a lot with that tub of love from Secret Knock last year. Oh, my God. That was incredible. Winning the tub of love was just, oh, my God. First of all, I was shocked. As you can <laughs> tell, when I ran up to the stage, I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And so many great things have happened since then, thanks to you and your secret knock and the connections that I made from there. That's what I love about life, Greg. It's like, you know, and you speak about this all the time. You know, we are the, the sum total of the five that we surround ourselves with. And Eric Swanson is one of my best friends. He introduced me to you. You introduced me to like so many speakers through Secret Knock, and I can't wait to go again next month. So excited about this. But I want to ask you the first question that I ask every speaker. For, I've been doing summits for years. I hosted a radio show on Blog Talk Radio in the early 2000s, and I love asking this question. What was, what is, it's the what and the why. What, why are you doing what you're doing now? What is the reason? I love knowing the purpose behind what got you into it and why are you doing it? Because you're fabulous at what you do. Yeah, I learned something called the success equation. I, I wish I could credit who I learned it from, but I, I truly don't know. I almost feel like they're a, a ghost in a movie where they came in and dropped some words of wisdom and walked out. And I'm going, like, what was that? Right. But they taught me that P plus T times A squared plus F is success. And it works like this. It's like you hear people say, find your passion or follow your passion. The money will follow. Well, unfortunately, that's kind of a complete lie, because unfortunately, most people, if you're passionate for singing and you're horrible at it, like a lot of these people that go out for these TV talent shows, well, you're not going to make it. So if you're passionate is cool, but you need T, which is talent. But if you're passionate and you're talented, you got a shot. But you have to do the first A, which is take action with it. And then the other A is associate with someone in the industry. But if you're passionate about singing, you're talented, you're willing to take action, pay your dues, align with someone in the music you know, episodes that could open up the doors and add the faith that's your journey, you have a shot. So someone sat down with me and said, what would you do? And I said, I'd be a teacher, but there's not a lot of money in it. I like my lifestyle. And they say, what's your talent? I go, I'm full of hot air. I'm a good talker. And they said, well, how could you take action with the right people? I said, I could, I could become one of those motivational speaker author guys. And they said, you could do this, that. That moment changed my life. I sold my corporation and never looked back. Wow. Wow. And what a gift you are to this world. I mean, really, the wisdom that you impart. And I, you know, I love the book title that you have, Stickability. You know, and with the pandemic going on right now and so many businesses closing down and so much turnover, you know, in business, stickability is like, it's a lost art. So can you, can you speak into how important it is to have stickability in your business, in your family, you know, like it's, it, and take the action to keep that stickability alive. Can you speak into that? Yeah, you well, know, stickability is simply the power to persevere. Uh, first, there's a dream, then there's a challenge, and then comes victory. Unfortunately, most people quit in the challenging times. And it's that people that persevere and find the solutions and adapt and adjust 
they're the ones that we tell the story about. I remember Chewit Cathy, founder of Chick-fil-A, once said, I go, what's the difference between you being a billionaire and other people? And he said, stop over planning, stop overthinking. And I says, well, everyone says that, but what do you mean? He says, well, if I'm on the sofa and I want to get to the end of the street, that's my goal. I have to have stickability. I'm not going to quit till that dream becomes true. He goes, but I'm not going to get on caught up on the how. He goes, I'm just going to find a solution by capitalizing on unexpected opportunity. A planner is going to plan every step where they're going to pause and take a break. If a sprinkler comes on, it freaks them out, they run back home. He goes, not me. I'm looking to the kid leave a skateboard or a bicycle out to make my journey short. If I get lucky, I'll wave down a neighbor driving by and hitch a ride to the end of the street. Says either way, I'll get to my goal. I'm just not so caught up in exactly how it has to happen. And so many people get caught up in the how, you know, and it's it's such a deterrent from meeting goals, you know, because they don't have the faith. They don't have the faith in themselves. They don't have a faith in a higher power. And there's so a lot, so many people, especially again during the pandemic. They're up in their own head without that faith. So how, and I, you wrote the, the foreword for one of the Think and Grow Rich, it was an auto suggestion. Um, how can people break through that, that non-committal, like they're not committed to that goal. They're just interested. So they go as far as they can go being interested in that goal, getting to that corner, like you're saying, and then they stop at the first obstacle. How can you, how can you inspire somebody to just, be committed. It's so important to be committed to anything and everything that you're doing. Well, I, I, I think it's a little opposite of that one for myself. I, I just say no. So that's the answer. The only reason yeah. is they committed to something that they shouldn't have. So they cut to the chase. That's the real truth. So trying to talk someone into sticking to something that they didn't want to do in the first place, I, I, I won't say that to any human being. I, I think that's bad counsel. So what I would do is say I'd be very cautious of what I commit myself to or I agree to. And then no matter what, I will see it to the end no matter what. And again, it's it's kind of like F the how. You know, my, my buddy Mark Anthony Bates talks about this all the time. You know, when we did that movie Wish Man, look, I don't I, I didn't know what I was doing. I still never ran a camera. I didn't do catering or casting. I made a movie. And it all begins with taking action. And I believe the universe rewards those who take constant action. So I took out an ad looking for a screenwriter in a secretive website that no one's ever heard of. It's called Craigslist. And for 20 bucks, <laughs> a guy answered it wrote the screenplay, directed the movie, produced it with me, and we won you know, awards all around the world. The, there is no excuse. Take action. Yeah, so important. And as a cancer survivor, I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoblastic lymphoma in 1991, and very few people lived at that diagnosis. And it was a pediatric, a rare pediatric form of cancer. And when I saw what you did, you know, with the gentleman who founded the Make-A-Wish Foundation, with that, that incredible man, um, I just, I love your work, Greg. I love your work and I love your energy. Like you're like so high energy and you get people all revved up. And I love that because everybody's so, you know, not everybody, never say always, never say everybody, never say nobody. But so many people today are just walking around like robots and just walking around so caught up in worry and fear and lack, fear, lack and scarcity. And you're like, come on, there's plenty of abundance everywhere. Everybody's got their own, I say, stay in your lane, right? Like stay in your lane because you have everything that you need in your lane. You never have to compete with anybody else. Stay in your lane. So how can you, how, and how do you inspire people to stay in their lane to, now, well, in your words, you know, uh, I want you to put it into your words, to have that abundant mindset. Well, first of all, you have to have the faith. You no, know, you talked about Napoleon Hill earlier, you know, it, it, it's applied faith. It's not having faith. It's applying that faith. You know, you can sit there and say, you know, I trust, but if you're not willing to act in that walk in that, that, that trust, then, you know, it's just blind words, at least to me. So for myself and my friends, that's what we do. We, we put it out there and then we ask for assistance from the universe, from our friends, from our peers. And then we get out of the way, be careful what you ask for. Cause you might just get it. So many people, you know, I have a quote. It says, what if God in the universe granted every wish and prayer, but you didn't like the packaging, so you sent it on its way? Dear God, I need 100 bucks. Please, Lord, I need 100 bucks. A neighbor drives up in a pickup truck. It's full of aluminum cans. He says, hey, take these off my hands, cash them in. They're worth 100 bucks. I don't want those stinky things. I asked. I prayed it was delivered. I didn't like the packaging. So I sent it on its way. Next time we ask and pray, chances are it won't be delivered in the same 
promptness. So I'm very careful of what I ask for, but then I get out of the my own way and I don't get too caught up in exactly how that packaging comes my direction. That is such a great point. That is, it's, it's a brilliant point. And it's, it's, it's simple, but profound at the same time, because like you said, the package shows up in so many different ways. It may not be a check for a hundred dollars. It may not be, you know, a hundred dollar bill or, or, you know, twenties, but it shows up, it could show up in an opportunity. And if, if somebody's in fear, lack and scarcity, and they're not in the abundant mindset, so many opportunities are showing up, but nobody, but you can't see it. Nobody can see an opportunity when you're in worry, right? You, you know, like if, you, if you're stuck in worry, Sharon Lecter, who I love, she, she said to me one time, worrying is just a prayer for what we do not want. Correct. And, and I, I, I believe that we are an evolutionary species. So what that means is every time I've crashed a car, I've got a better car. Every time someone broke up with me, I got a better girlfriend. It's just, this is the way <laughs> So every time something bad happens, I always go, woohoo, something amazing must be coming my way. And, you know, it's it's really interesting. Once you have that mentality, you, you all of a sudden start stop worrying about the challenges. You know, right now, I'll give you an example. I, I'm single and I, I went on a date the other day and I drove like an hour down to meet them. And they text me right when I got there. I can't make it. And, wow. and it's, but no, instead of getting upset, I went, woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> I go, something just, I go, I'll take that hour of drive for whatever it just saved me from having to visit the doctor's office or whatever, right? And right. so my mindset shifted. And by doing that and having that type of capabilities, all of a sudden I had amazing conversations on the way home where I made some business calls and got some things done, you know, and used that time accordingly. I love it. And I love that example. And it's, uh, everything is happening for us, right? Yeah. No matter what it is, everything is happening for us. I had with the cancer, I was like, oh my God, that's the worst thing. That could, I was 25 years old. I was working on Wall Street. I had the Series 763, the insurance license, power lunches, loved my Chanel bag and my house out in the Hamptons with like 20 of my friends. So superficial, Greg. I was so superficial. But I didn't know about the inner world. I had no idea that everything was happening for me. You know, if something went wrong, I was like, what? You know, why did that happen? And what you're saying is, and, and, I, and I learned this along the way also, the cancer was the was one of the biggest blessings in my life, you know, because it opens up a whole world inside of me that I had no idea existed, which introduced me to the personal development realm, which now I'm hanging out with the people that I was reading their best selling New York Times best selling books in the 90s, you know. So everything is always had the divorce. At the time, it was heartbroken and, and miserable and just devastated. I've never been happier, healthier, and wealthier in my life than I am today. And I love my life. That's you know, so it's, cool. everything is always happening for us. And I want everything, every for you guys, for everybody that's watching, know that whatever you're going through right now, it may seem hard and it may seem hard to hear, but it is happening for you because like Greg said, you know, this if you're in a mount, you're on a mountaintop, and then you go to the valley. You're in the valley and it just, it sucks for the lack of a better word, you know, and, but you're learning the best lessons while you're there. So when you come out of the valley and with stickability and the perseverance, we will, you know, come out the other side. And when you come out the other side, the mountaintop is even higher, you know, than where you were before. I love what you say. I love what you speak about. So the millionaire to mentors with your work with the children is just, oh my God. So what you do, cause I, I mean, I wrote character building children's books. I have three kids and now 18, 20, 20, uh, 20, he's going to be 21 and 24. What is it that you do? And I, I know a little bit about it. You go into the neighborhoods and you work with these kids. Can you tell everybody watching the amazing work that you're doing with the youth that you got credit from the president of the United States for? Yeah, well, that was based on the first book that I wrote many years ago. It was called The Millionaire Mentor. And people think I just mentor rich people, but I was working with inner city gang kids here in my hometown of San Diego. So as I pull up in a brand new car, the kids would say, here comes my millionaire mentor, became kind of a badge of honor where, like you said, the president wrote a letter of combination, changed my life, my community. It was absolutely amazing. And now I'm still in touch with many of those people that are no longer kids anymore. Like you said, they're in their 30s and it's, it's so awesome to see how their kids of their own and, and how some of the things that we pass along, they're passing along to the to the next generation. I do want to talk about something you just mentioned, though, about uh, peaks and valleys. In Three Feet from Gold, we interviewed the guy, uh, Ron Glosser, who ran the entire trust for 
uh, the Hershey family and for the corporation. And he said, never make a major life changing decision when you're in a valley. And he says, everything is cyclical. You have your ups and you have your downs. He goes, when you have a down moment, how could you make a major life changing decision at your lowest point? He goes, but since everything is cyclical, you're going to have a rise. He goes, if you just wait it out and make a decision when things start going in the opposite direction back up, when you get a little giddy up in your sails, a little you know, wind in your backside, he goes, you'll make a completely different decision based on that point of view and save 10 years of your life from going back and having to correct the wrong choices because you made them based at your lowest point. So when I'm in my low things, I never, I just sit in it and I just, I just sit in it and let it sit there and bask because I know that this too shall pass. And when things start going this direction, that's when they get back in the game. I think that's amazing. It's, it's, and it's brilliant. And uh, I love, I'm all about vision and decision, like have a vision for your life. Even when you're in the Valley, like even when I was at Sloan, I had no hair, like nothing. Like I, like I had no hair. I understand. <laughs> In the 80s, that was a big deal, Greg. <laughs> I was diagnosed in 1991. My hair was out to here <laughs> before I got diagnosed. But I mean, it, it, I was left really like just, it felt stripped of, of everything. My identity was thrown in the air. You know, like it just, my future was thrown in the air. Like it just felt like I was stripped of everything. And it was at that point, you know, I didn't make any decisions, but I wrote down a vision of, okay, the doctors were telling me that I'm going to die. And I told them, you didn't tell me about this inner world. I read a lot of books now. You can leave my room. Get the hell out. <laughs> and I kept living every time I said I was going to die. But um, I wrote a, I wrote down pen to paper. Okay, Aaron, where do you want to be in two and a half years when this protocol is over? Where do you want to be? Everybody else can see you wherever they see you. But where do you want to be? And even though I was in the valley, I wrote down beyond my wildest dreams because I had nothing to lose where I wanted to be. And I, and I checked off every single one of those goals on that list through life. You know, the action I had to take just to, just to get me to, from A to B to C to D, you know, to Z. But I love what you're saying about don't make big decisions in the Valley, have goals, have goals in the Valley, know that, you know, the direction you want your life to go in. But when it comes to the bigger decisions, because you're, your nerves and, and different things will get in the way and compromise certain decisions that you're making. But when you're in a great headspace and listen, you could still be walking around with it, with a lethal diagnosis and be in a great headspace. You know, I was, I was pulled over by cops. They, they, they had no idea that, you know, why are you parking that disabled parking thing? I'm like, I can't walk from here to the corner. <laughs> I had, to, and they didn't believe me because I looked fine and I'm smiling and bubbly with a wig and makeup. You know, so as long as you're, I, I believe, and tell me if I'm wrong, in a great headspace, even though you're in, a, in the valley, but you're in a great headspace, um, decisions that you're making will be a lot less wonky than if you're just in that fear, lack, and scarcity and still worried about dying and worried about getting broken up with and, you know, things like that. Is that right? Yes, that was a lot you just said there. But <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sit and, and that. I mean, I was like, wow. I was really deep into your story there for a minute. That was pretty, pretty amazing. And I love your PMA, your positive mental attitude. Uh, you know, this, this right here, the president of Napoleon Hill foundation sent me this PMA and I always keep it there because with PMA, I think it, 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 it does solve quite a bit. And I'm writing a new book right now. It's called the secret of happiness. And we're realizing that the realities are the people that have a happier disposition, have a happier life. They also get better jobs. They also get better looking spouses. They also drive nicer cars. They also have less physical disease. And it's interesting to see how these things correlate. And, you know, you also mentioned about we're a reflection of the people we hang around the most. And that is so true, especially when it comes down to, if you don't have a lot of people you can call out to, you've got books, you've got CD, you got, I don't have CDs anymore, but you've got audio books and programs of people you can listen to, to put you in the state that you really need to be. Which is, which is true. And for me, during the divorce at one point, I felt so alone because so many, you know, like the neighbors and friends and things change suddenly. And I could be in a room full, full of 100 people and I still felt alone. It was a very strange moment in life. And then I remember coming home and holding onto my, my banister and going, you know what? I'm not alone because I had God. Like you're never alone no matter what. For me, that's, that's, that's who I have, you know, always, no matter what. So you're right. Everybody always has somebody. And again, even the books and you have incredible books. And I want to respect your time because I know you have a hard break very soon. 
Um, and you have a free gift for the listeners, which is just absolutely incredible. And it's one of your books, The Millionaire Mentor. Oh, in fact, I tell you what, you're going to do that one. Um, we're going to, yes. So we have a, a, both a digital download for anyone that wants it. And I can also send you a couple of physical copies and sign them and you can give them to whoever you want. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely oh, fantastic. I have it sitting out in front of me here. And I, I, I think I missed I, my bad. I, oh, here it is. Okay. Oh my God. I, I'm like, I have this oh, one. That's it. <laughs> It just came in, so my brain was going, where did I put that thing? And where can they reach you to, to get that? So you go to my website. It's just gregreed.com, and then click on the uh, author page. It'll take you right over there. You can download it. Uh, and then anyone that wants a hard physical copy, just uh, email me directly and say, hey, Knucklehead, send me one. I'd be Knucklehead. Glad to so you can, <laughs> I love you. And you can have it on your uh, personal Rolodex or your uh, library. I love it. The personal Rolodex with the cassettes. That's it. And then also we're gonna, we're gonna fax you over a copy on your beta <laughs> on your beta player. Does that make right. sure you yeah, exactly. You understand. Get I'll your grab the microfiche. Play. I'll grab the microfiche and then we'll <laughs> and we'll wire it to you. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> I have make a bunch sure. of books here. I have positive <laughs> impact. I have three feet from gold. Well, you did the forward for Eric's. Don't shoot your Eric Power, don't shoot your future. Mm -hmm. Dean Myers is, is on the TV show also. You did the book with him and you did auto suggestion with me. I'm in the book with you. I'm so excited about this. So many great things. And I'm so happy that Eric introduced us. You are a blessing. You are so great for this world right now. And I'm sure always, you know, in, uh, in every lifetime, <laughs> if anybody believes in that or forever and infinity, because you really are, you're, you're a huge blessing. So right. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us today. And I know you have to run and uh, you just, you've been an incredible asset to this Life on Track TV series. So thank you, Greg Reed. And I will see you at Secret Knock. So see excited you. about that. Thank you. So for everybody listening, you can join us every Monday and we're going to have more information and insight on how you can get your life on track personally and professionally. Have a wonderful day. Have a magnificent day. And always remember to live onward and upward. Love you.